Hey yo, this is Joey Jahead, you rocking with Hip Hop to 1987. I'm home, it's time to turn all the way up, the opposite of the damn. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. It's your boy Brandon B. White, Hip Hop Since 1987.com, man. We here with the, you know, Philly legend, you know, Joey Jahad, man. What's, what's up, y'all? What's, what's, on, what's up, man? You know, last time we talked, it's a couple years ago, then. I ain't here. And then the next thing you know, you, you went to jail, man. What happened, man? I was, the, all right, the whole time while I was running around, like since 06, 05, I was on the run. Mm -hmm. My whole time, like, I was on the run. And I wouldn't turn myself in, like, even when I was about to. Went up to New York to try to sign with 50 and mm -hmm. all my situations when I had situations on the table I was on the run so nobody really wanted to like Get in the bed with that type of situation yeah. but, like we could invest this money But this young boy might be going to jail forever so like we ain't gonna fuck with shorty Like and even though they was feeling my, my vibe they wasn't trying to do it and I was on the run from like all that time I got caught in 2010 and I took them on tour again They told me to turn myself back in I took them on tour again for three more years and then, <laughs> then when I got locked up, yeah. motherfucker, I got locked up jam, I mean, May 16th, 2013, and that's when I had a judge only bench warrant, and I had Judge Wogan. Anybody who know who Judge Wogan is, like, they know he don't play no games. You're getting knocked in your head, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. Do not pass, go, do not collect $200. So <laughs> that's yeah. where it was at. I was supposed to go to jail, and I, I tried to finesse my way out of it, you know, being a Virgo, Virgos think they can finesse their way out of everything. Yeah, 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 I started yeah. making moves, I did the uh, GED joint, I got that shit in 11 days. They weren't even supposed to let me take the test. Shout out to Mr. Constable, he let me take it. I ended up being a tutor and all that shit too. Okay. But, so I do that shit, I was at CEC, that shit knocked off. And um, they said, uh, I got a two. It was first it was a six to 12, then it went down to 48, I had Robert Gernberg. Then it went down to a motherfucking two and a half to seven. But then they said, I, or I could get the two to four, with boot camp, I'm boot camp eligible because I mm -hmm. had got, this was my second gun case, but I didn't shoot nobody, I didn't rob nobody. Yeah. So it wasn't a, a violent crime, it wasn't yeah. a victim. So he was like, um, well, I could go with the guidelines and the guidelines say that you didn't do anything violent, so you have a gun case. Uh, I guess you could just um, do this boot camp, but I don't think you could get through it. And I'm like, I can do anything for 180 days. Send yeah. me there. So they sent me to boot camp. So I was probably, I was locked up for like a year before I got the boot camp. And then they sent me to the boot camp and shit. And I did six months and I came home. That was the worst, that was the worst situation in my life. Cause like, I, I talk back, I break mm -hmm. the rules, rules made the break and shit like so that. You so you made it through boot camp? Or? I made it through. This, this, I was this close to getting kicked out like every day. I was on eggshell. That shit was weird. Like, <laughs> you can't talk back. You can't argue with nobody. You can't speak to your friends you knew for a million years on the street. If okay. I see you walking past, I got to just walk straight, stiff like a little oh, robot. Wow. Like everybody did. Like that shit ain't, it wasn't jail. It was okay. like, and if you wouldn't argue, you just get kicked out and you got maxed out your sentence. So like, I don't, wasn't trying to get kicked yeah, yeah. out. I had shit to get back. So do a lot of people fool or do a lot of people change and get through? If you weak minded, you getting kicked the fuck out of boot camp. That shit ain't okay. for you. You might sign up. First yeah, of all, they're gonna make you get up at 4.30 in the morning. You gotta brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. You brush your teeth, shave your face. Niggas ain't shaving their face. I came home, there wasn't no mustache. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, like, yeah. I was weird, like, you see what I'm saying? So, so you, you gotta shave your dress when you, when you got the boot From the gun bust, that oh, shit ain't wow. there. Um, no, I'm, that's my religion, I gotta keep my hair, uh, it's my power. Mm -hmm. um, no, fuck all that, you cut your hair, but you gotta get the fuck out of our program. So you can cut it if you want, that's your yeah, decision. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Now make your choice. But no, it's my religion, I gotta eat at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, you Muslim and all that, that's your religion, um, but you can do that at a regular jail. If you're going to be here, all that shit is out the way. You're not praying when you want to pray. You're not washing up, taking this shit and none of that when you want to. And if you do got to take this shit while we working out and all that, don't worry. They going to do a thousand push-ups and a thousand four-point squats for you. And that's the way it was going. And they just like basically, so weak-minded motherfuckers, I was dead. Like I get us in trouble on purpose because it was funny. It wasn't nothing to do. <laughs> so I just get us in trouble. Like I say some shit like, uh, I got to take a shit. And he be like, oh, off the long black, oh, you got to take a shit. Like, all right, don't worry, Mr. Thomas, go ahead. Don't worry about it. So I go in there, he be like, yo, full point squad, start position move, so you hear everybody. And he be like, damn, so I come out like I'm about to do my full point. No, Mr. Thomas, you have to take a shit. Pull that chair up, you sitting in front of this squad bay, and you gonna watch these motherfuckers work out. I'm like, no, I'll work out with them. They be, oh, man, I hate you fucking head. All you do, man, you so fucking nothing. Like, why would you do that? You knew he was going to do this to us. Yeah. I'm like, I'll work out with them, man. You see, they said, man, I came up here to get strong and go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you going to sit here and watch. You going to sit up here with me. So he'll make you sit up there. But the only thing is, whatever exercise they make you do, they got to do it too. Okay. okay. So, like, they, they, and they, they, they machines. Like, they okay. live for this shit. Like, they probably fell out. 
um, military heaven and fell into that boot camp and then they did their thing. Yeah, but that shit was crazy. So like you mentioned had, so everybody knew who had was. Yeah, was I, was, I, was under, I was under the radar for a while. I was trying to hide. Okay. You gotta understand, when I went in there, I had dreads and hair on my face. I go up there, I shave my hair off my face and I got a fucking baldy like everybody else. So yeah. you can't really tell right away. And then yeah. I'm not talking, it ain't, yeah. you can't. So yeah. I'm not talking to nobody. But when a couple niggas who know me or pay attention to the situation, once the word got out, it was goofy. And this girl's up there too, they all hit stick. R three on R three on the PlayStation controller. They all hit stick. R three. <laughs> you don't want none of them. They're not attractive. They look worse than the fiends out here. They worse. Okay. Like, so okay. they probably was fiends. So and it's like they was, it was girls up there. So some dudes they fall in love with the girl because they ain't get chicks. My shit at all time high. They ain't get chicks out here, so they was loving it up there. They want to be in the limelight for them hoes. And like, I, do you want to go home and make a million dollars? Do you want to sit in here and keep getting? They give you a yeah. little, a six week hit, and then they give you another six week hit. They start changing to the point now, like, if they don't got an open bed on the platoon under you, you got to wait till it's open bed. So you might be up there for two years. Nobody can't do two years up there. You might go, you rather go to any other jail except there. That yeah. shit weird. Real rap, it was weird as shit. So like, I, <clears throat> did you run into anybody? Once they figured out who you was, were they running up rapping to you or did you yeah, run like, to any other rappers? Before, before we had gotten our like boot camp stage, they let mm -hmm. us go to the yard and shit like that. Like, cause you basically general pop. Yeah. So they let you go to the yard and it's like SIP. SIP is for the drug addict. So if you got caught with some drugs and you just lied and said you was on drugs, they mm -hmm. send you there, you go six months there, six months in the halfway house and six months in the rehab and then your other six months on parole or some old shit like that. And that's your mm -hmm. whole two years. That's how the SIP is. So SIP, they get, well, it was only the barber had a TV, but they get to watch TV every day. We don't get the TV. We get to call one time a month. Mm -hmm. So they get to do a lot of other shit that we don't get to do. So they know shit. And they mm -hmm. be on the phone all the time. They're like, damn, had you up here and shit. So it was a few dudes who rap. And you know, the sport of me, I'm a spitter. I know how to rap my ass off. And like, mm -hmm. I know these motherfuckers from other parts of Pennsylvania who might, they might not never see me face to face again. So when I got a chance to rap, I think I rapped twice up there. And I rapped, I rapped one time in Camp Hill and I shut the gate down. Everybody was on the fucking gate, Nick. They thought it was a riot. I got, I got cell restriction for that shit. Oh, wow. Cause there was so many motherfuckers at the yeah. gate. They thought I was trying to start a riot. I'm like, I ain't even rapping. And they just locked me in for that shit. So I learned my lesson a little bit. I wasn't really rapping up there, but I rapped twice. I fucked it up. I killed, I killed um some shit for this Pittsburgh nigga. My young boy Coke. That's my youngin too. Like he mm -hmm. funny and shit. A little freaked out youngin. That's my young boy though. And I ain't really rap up there. It wasn't really nothing to do. So like when I go to do my eye, I might talk to a few niggas I know. I see um, other motherfuckers who was up there. And that's it, like, but it was real weird. It was a weird situation. I read the most books I ever read in my life. I don't remember reading books since motherfucking uh, Goosebumps was out and shit like that when I was in like the sixth grade. And, and okay. just the so yeah, I read every book, all the Jimmy Jimmy the Saint books, his books was heavy, but they don't let you get them up there. My books was on library status. Like I gave all that shit away to my young boy Ike. He got 22 and a half to 45 or some shit like that. I gave him all my books and shit before I left. I had every magazine, my girl was sending all that shit on Urban Ink. Uh, every magazine, I was I was in a loop. I knew a lot about all the shit that was going on right now. Like I was listening to Herb and them from Chicago before I got locked up, and mm -hmm. I was listening to Shy Glizzy and them before I got locked up. I was listening to Future Heavy. I was telling niggas that Future yeah, yeah. had that sound. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And probably on my old interview, I probably was talking about dude, but yeah. I don't know. But like, so so so, so what happened? <clears throat> so what have you learned from being locked up to now? Like, what um, you know? What, what just, you learned from that experience? Um, f far as like. I thought all of the real niggas was locked up. I learned that that's a lie. <laughs> There's a lot of weird niggas in jail. I learned that. I'm okay, like, damn, they got me out here with all these fucking weird ass motherfuckers, dog. I know some real niggas in jail. I go to jail, them niggas was weirder. I know for a fact that you could buy niggas. I figured mm -hmm. that out. I, I, I figured that out. The, 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 well, I could put a JPEG on somebody's head and then I could make them bang somebody out if I wanted to. They gonna do it because like, it's the same as the streets except it's smaller and it's more pettier. Like you can get somebody to kill somebody for like four bags of chips and a pack of cigarettes. Like you, if you wanted to, like that's yeah, where yeah, I just wanted yeah. to go. But like I ain't, they would treat me like the real shit. They would treat me like Jesus in that joint. Like I ain't had to do nothing. I wouldn't never had to lift a finger or nothing. Like, everybody was showing me. I ain't know I was gonna get that much love. Mm. But I got a lot of homies who book, so you know. That shit was cool for the most part. It was just like, it feel like it never happened though. Now that I'm back out here, like I don't feel like I was gone for two and a half years and no shit like that. I don't feel like I was locked up. Like, so, so what's gonna happen now that you out? You right back, now, you back on this music? Like, yeah, look, this is the first time I'm gonna be able to get music 100%. Okay. 110, like before, like I told you, I was gonna run. So when I see you, I do the interview. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna let this shit get wheels under it through brand and they sight or whatever, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this, but I gotta go back out here 
and I'm stressing because I can't find no work. I gotta put this shit on that block and make that shit move. Yeah. That was my main thing. I was giving the streets. Anything I do, I give it 110 percent Whether it's a girl, I'm gonna get her 110 percent so I can't have three, four girlfriends. Yeah. Cause I got to go with her mm-hmm. to the max. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So that's the way it is. I never gave rap that much and I was getting so much motherfucking publicity and buzz off of it being and I wasn't even giving it my all. So that's why people should be scared right now. Like, yeah. what the fuck do home? He was doing this shit all from the muscle. It ain't like I had a machine behind me who, all right, you, you, and you, y'all all got 400,000. You know what I'm saying? Let's go with hat. We gonna yeah, go with hat, yeah, we gonna yeah. win. Cause we already see what that could do. Yeah, you know yeah, how that, 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 yeah. that situation works out. It's, it's proven, it's as it's gone. So now that everybody got worry about the fact that I'm gonna get this music shit 110%. And who do I got in the muff, the Wizard of Oz behind that curtain who mm-hmm. pulling them strings? Because mm-hmm. it's about to happen. I already got good relationships with everybody who really was doing something major as far as the U, Cab, and other motherfuckers yeah, who doing shit yeah. that's outside of Philly that could get hurt. So it's really it's about to get spooky. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. It's your boy E-Money, here with a great friend to the site, my man Lil Dirk. It ain't been too long since I last seen you, man. How you been? Chill, man. Working. I can dig it, man. Well, first and foremost, congratulations on Appreciate the debut it. project. Yeah, man. How's it, how's it feel to finally have that over with, man? Get it done and get it out to the people. It still feel crazy. Just knowing it's an album, I'm saying it's a different feeling with a mixtape. 